Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today we're going to take a look at the uh, setup and first install of the B Link BT3 Pro. Okay, so here it is. This is the, uh, the B Link BT3 Pro. This, uh, despite its diminutive form, it is actually quite a powerful little unit. So today what we're going to do is we're going to fire it up and get Windows installed on it and see what it's actually like. And let's see what the setup process is like. Now, I've got my wireless keyboard here, my mouse. And I've got my HDMI, plug, HDMI cable plugged in. So we're going to do it on the big telly so you can see what's going on at the same time. So find the power button, which is on the back. That one there. And see if it works. No. Oh. We've got a little blue light, a tiny little blue light. Other than that, you wouldn't know it was on. Now I'll have to find out which HDMI channel we're on. There's only two on this TV, so it's a 50-50. No, not that one. Can barely contain the excitement. There we have it. I'll better keep that just in case it's on a bit loud. So there we are, we just turned the machine on for the first time and this is the uh, the setup and as it says, it, just a moment. Hopefully it is just a moment because otherwise this is gonna be a very long and very boring video. Now just to recap the specs of this machine, you're looking at a Intel Atom X5 8350 quad core CPU. Looking at four gigabytes of RAM, DDR3L and 32 gigabytes of eMMC storage. Uh, also, the unit has uh, dual outputs for VGA, which we're not currently using, and HDMI, uh, which we are using, which will scale up to 4K. Uh, interrupted by the setup. So, current language, English. Yeah, we'll go with that. Let's see if there is any volume on this. Hi there, I'm Cortana, and I'm here to help. Um, a little sign in here, a touch of Wi-Fi there, and we'll have your PC ready for all you plan to do. Cool. You can use your voice or the keyboard oh, along the way, and if you'd like me to stay quiet, just select the sound icon. If you need an assistive screen reader, press the Windows, Control, and Enter keys at the same time to enable narrator. Okay, enough intro. Let's dig in. She's got a lot to say for herself. Your region is set to the United States. Is that right? No. But we haven't got a microphone connected, so it's not going to hear anything. So we'll manually collect United manually select United Kingdom. And there she is doing her thing again, just a moment. Your keyboard is set to United Kingdom. Want to stick with that? Yep, let's do that. Do you also type with another keyboard layout? I struggle with this keyboard layout. Adding another one's not gonna make it any easier, is it? Skip. Next up, the legal stuff. In short, you have to accept to use Windows. You can decline, but then, you know, no windows. Do you accept? Well, obviously I haven't got a lot of great deal of choice in this, uh, this matter, so I think we're gonna have to accept. Now let's get you connected to a network. That way you can get updates, apps, and cat videos as soon as possible. How about the first one on the list? Want to use that one? Yeah, why not? Now type your credentials. Look away. Mission accomplished. You're all linked up. Okay, so that's just connected to the Wi-Fi. It's uh, asking about if you've got a data plan. If you've got a data plan, you can set it to uh, disconnect in case you uh, run up a massive bill. But we don't in this case, so... Let's just click on next. 
And here we are. All right, you're connected. Now we'll check for any updates. Found some. Hang tight while we get them installed. Now what do I do? Awkward now silence. Turn off your hmm. device, please. It'll mess things up. Okay. I won't turn the device off. So, so far this install and setup has been pretty easy. Uh, Cortana's guided... Leave your device on, please. We're going as fast as we can. Promise. It's almost like she's listening. Anyway, as I was saying, it looks like it's going pretty well so far. As everything's being sort of spoon-fed to, to me. <laughs> Still updating. I'm watching this if it's your own computer. Almost there. It's bad enough as it is without having to watch someone else go through it. So I, uh, I do appreciate you staying with us so far. Hopefully it won't be too much longer. As she says, almost there. Don't turn. Done and done. You're up to date. Done and done. Your computer will restart and keep updating. Okay, fair enough. Looks like the uh, graphics drivers just kicked in. More just a moment. Black screen of death or reset? Hopefully a reset. Definitely a reset. Bit of subliminal advertising. And here we go, just a moment again. I'm trying to work out where in the room I can hear a humming coming from. I think it's that she. It might be a lamp, it might be the TV, but I can't hear anything at all coming from the computer. I'm really trying to listen out for it, but there's literally nothing in there to make noise, not even really. Not even any, even any electrical noise, nothing at all. So, let's carry on with the setup. So, Got the choice of signing with Microsoft. Obviously, if you sign with Microsoft, you get access to all the good things like OneDrive, Skype for Business. Sorry, Skype, not Skype for Business. That would be another thing completely. Um, access to all your account settings, etc. You get personalised wallpapers and everything stays synchronised in the cloud and what have you. But this PC is going to be used for a different purpose, so uh, we'll just have an offline account. Type what you want to name your account. Uh, we'll call this um, admin2 for no real reason. Okay, now type a password for your account. A super memorable password. Mm, no, nope, can't think of one. Hey, look, it's the me part of setup. Can I have permission to use the info I need to do my best work? As much as I'd love to say no, I'm going to say yeah. These are the settings Microsoft recommends. Go ahead and review them and select accept when you're ready. I'm not a particularly paranoid person about data, so I don't really care what the settings are. But for transparency and for this to be using as much uh, sort of background horsepower as possible to give it a real test, I'm going to click accept because I think that's what most people in my position are probably going to do. So I'm going to click upset, click accept and uh, carry on. Okay, that's the last step. We need to get a few more things polished up for you and Windows will be all yours. Looking forward to helping out. So I think that's pretty much Windows set up, or at least it's asked all the settings it needs to. Now it's going to go through and uh, 
I was going to say a well-known phrase about polishing certain things that we wouldn't want to polish, but I'm not going to say that. Let's just let it do its own thing, and uh, we'll just watch it as it does. I might fast forward this bit if it goes on for too long. Although again, for the sake of transparency, it's actually probably a good idea to let you see the exact time that this does take. So that if you are thinking about buying one of these, you can see how long it's really going to take you to set it up. I wish I brought a cup of tea now. Actually, several minutes. How long several minutes, Calf? Because a couple of minutes is two, right? A few minutes is three. So several is going to be five, ten. Sev, seven sounds like several. Maybe a seven. Seven minutes. Several minutes. Now, if you're bored watching this and you want to watch something else, um, I did an unboxing of a rapid boil kettle. So, if you want, you can watch a kettle boil as well. Or certainly you can watch me uh, brush my teeth with activated charcoal. That's on a link up uh, here, here, or here, somewhere up there. In fact, for a rapid boil kettle, it didn't boil that quickly. Oh, here we are. That wasn't too long at all. And there we have it from setup. Well, from initial power on to Windows being pretty much ready to use, that has been, well, I don't know how long that's been, something, five minutes, ten minutes? So, Calf tells me reliably that's been about 14 minutes. So, if you uh, take a look down in the bottom now and look at the time of this video, if it doesn't say something like 14 minutes, one of the two things has happened. Either Calf's got it wrong or I've edited the crap out of this video to make it shorter. But anyway, there we are. Windows is up and running. This is the B-Link BT3 Pro. So let's have a look at the specs of the system, just so you can see them. So in system, we've got Windows 10 Home. We've got version 1703. So depending on when you're watching this video, 1703 might be current, it might not be. Um, Processor is the Intel Atom X5 Z350 CPU at 1.44 GHz, which turbos up to 1.9 as we said before. Uh, installed RAM is showing 4 GB of RAM, so it's showing the full complement of 4 GB rather than 3.5 or whatever it normally shows when you've got an uh, onboard chipset with onboard graphics. And it's showing us a 64 bit operating system with a 64 bit processor doesn't say anything about activation, but I don't think it does here, actually. No, it just says manufacturer. Let's type it in there. Activation. See if Windows is activated. So there we go, activation. We've got Windows 10 Home, and it says there, Windows is activated. There's the product ID, and there's the product key, which has been blanked out, and QKB, K7, from what I remember, is one of the larger OEM codes uh, endings. So we're all good. Obviously, you've got the option to upgrade to Windows 10 Professional should you want to, if you want to add this to a business domain or you want to add some of the other pro features. But uh, other than joining the domain, I can't think of any reason why you'd want pro over home anyway. Um, maybe uh, BitLocker encryption, possibly for the hard drive, but it's not really a, a big deal. So uh, there we go, that's the, the product spec. Let's have a look at Task Manager. This actually feels quite uh, quite nippy, quite quite responsive to the use, considering I've just installed it and it's still updating and putting all the stuff in the background together. So let's have a look at more details and performance. And there we go, the CPU, because we're uh, doing updates at the moment in the background and it's just doing its first setup, at the moment the CPU, yeah, whatever. 
That's uh, OneDrive asking for a bit of attention, but we won't give it any attention because we don't like OneDrive anymore because I have to pay Microsoft to use it. It hurts me so much. But anyway, so memory at the moment, we're showing 1.5 gigabytes used. I have the four gigabytes. So as I said in my previous video, if you watched the unboxing, I think it was the unboxing video I said about uh, Windows to boot up, normally uses about one and a half gigs of RAM. So if you only buy the two gig version of this, uh, you're in a whole world of trouble straight away as soon as you want to open up any apps like Edge or Chrome. Chrome is going to really kill this thing if you've only got 2 gigs of RAM, so go for the 4 gig version, which is what we've got here. And this is the CPU, currently CPU is idling 6%, 10%, just doing a bit in the background. Uh, see it's throttling up and down, utilization is only 6%, so it's dropping down to about 1.2, 1.3 gigahertz. Um, I think it will drop down a little bit lower than that. Yeah, there we go, I just saw 1.8. So I think probably about 800 megahertz is probably the lowest it'll uh, clock down to, which is not bad. And we're showing there four cores, four logical processors, and if you plan on running a server on this of any sort, even though it's not really that fast, um, it does support virtualization. So you could install a virtual machine on here if you if you felt the need to and also actually what a lot of people are using these for are things like emulators and uh, SNES emulators um, I'm not sure about Dolphin but a lot of the sort of well-known emulators do run actually really quite well on the uh, lower powered Intel atoms especially when you've got a little bit of RAM to throw its way so that's another use of one of these machines possibly turn it into a, uh, a coin op build a cabinet, throw it in the back, put a monitor on it and use it as a, uh, a retro coin op. Now obviously other things you could use this for, uh, if you haven't got a computer at home, kids these days always needing to do homework and print stuff out all the time. So you can get one of these, hook it up to your TV and if the kids need to do their homework and print out stuff, they can do that. And actually talking of printing, if you want to see a really good budget printer, click on the link up here and you can have a look at the uh, Epson Expression, I want to say, but I'm not sure if it is Epson XP two three five. Is it half two two four five? She's telling me such a good thing to have around. Everyone should have a calf at home. But yeah, the uh, XP two four five all in one multifunction printer currently on special offer, pretty much everywhere around the world for like thirty pounds or thirty five dollars, forty dollars, whatever. Really good printer, really cheap. So check that out. But sorry, getting off track here. So let's have a look and see what this is like. Let's open up Edge. And this is the first time this has been opened, so it's going to open slowly anyway, because it always does. Because it welcomes you and all does all that rubbish. Right, there we go, there's the uh, Microsoft homepage. Sorry, the Edge homepage which essentially, I guess, is the Microsoft homepage because it's Microsoft Edge. You know what I mean. But you can see it's uh, scrolling through quite nicely there, and I believe, I'm pretty sure we're currently running at uh, 1080p. I'll just check that. Yeah, resolution 1920 by 1080, so... Um, this, I'd imagine, is the resolution most people are going to try and run at if they're connecting this to a TV um, or at really most monitors. I can't imagine many people using it for 4K playback, but uh, things like Netflix, if you want to use 4K on there, Netflix is really well optimized for these little in, uh, Atom processors. So if you want to watch 4K movies on Netflix, then uh, this is a great little box to do it on. Now, speaking of which, if we, uh, we have a quick look at YouTube and just to see how it goes see how well optimized this is currently so youtube now let's see calf uh, where should we go to look at a video can you think of anyone that's not the right answer oh i got a great idea let's go to mike's unboxing not to be confused with mike tyson boxing because yeah it's just different mike unboxing you can join today Oh, I spelled that wrong, but hopefully I'll find it. Yay, there we are. Okay, so let's have a look. This is the... Oh, this is a video I've done just recently. 
This is the Cooler Max. Uh, Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. Shut up! And on this channel, we'll be doing. Damn full. So, this is the Cooler Master Box Lite 5. Um, this is a build I'm, I've been doing. A stunning website. Let's turn it down. I've already done it with Wix. Let me show you how it's done. Oh, crap. Don't want to do that. Oh, now I've put the TV on. Idiot. Come on. This is why you don't use TVs as monitors. I mean, I'm looking, Here we go. I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling. There's no end, it's me, all the way down. <sighs> right, we don't like that. Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing, and today we're going to try and build a very warm system into a Cooter Master Master Box Light 5. I'm really struggling with that name. <laughs> Okay, welcome back. So, and there we are on the big screen. Master, Master Box Lite 5 case. And I'm going to turn the volume down this time. The option of having three fans in the front, one fan in the back, but no top ventilation. So, a lot of people have been saying that there's going to be. So, that seems to be running alright. It doesn't seem to be uh, dropping any frames. Just see what great. settings we've got going so on here. This is a test. I found what comes uh, It's 720p at the moment at. Run through what they are. I don't know, whatever um, frames per second that is. So, this is a, uh, let's hit up 1080. Now, my internet is pretty awful here because I've got Virgin Xbox Media Broadband, which, if okay. you're listening, Richard which Branson, you should be ashamed of yourself because it is PR awful. Computers. They are going to be running very warm. And but there we go. Heat. Next on the same motherboard 1080p, a, uh, and doesn't seem to be dropping any frames. 350 which is one of the, uh, the hotter running of AMD's FX CPUs. Looks pretty smooth. Not quite as hot as the... Not the acting and the stuff, the a, a picture. Now, to try and even up Cooler Master's chance... Of now, if you haven't seen this already, take a look at it. This is a Cooler Master, Master Box Lite 5, Uber, which is a case I had to return because it was ridiculously hot. The fan on the front. But if so you want to find out more about the why the it was so hot, service. then uh, check Maybe the links in the... Description somewhere, job, wherever they're going to appear somewhere. Anyway, I digress. Let's get rid of that. Uh, and just to round things off on the heat stakes. So essentially, that's what most people are going to be doing. You're going to be going onto YouTube with your PC, or maybe going onto Edge and finding out, I don't know, the square root of something for the kids' homework, or printing out some, I don't know, some random ingredients list for school cookery or something like that. This PC, it seems really weird calling it a PC because of the size of it, it's, it is ridiculous. It, it is probably not much bigger than my hand. And actually, now I've picked it up, there's a very, very small amount of warmth there, but hardly anything, so I don't think it's gonna be running very hot at all. But anyway, there we are. There's not really much more I can say about it. I could waffle on for ages and show you different benchmarks and graphs and all sorts of stuff like that, but reality is, is that going to persuade you if you want one or not? The only real reason, like, the only real way I would say is to get one on Amazon. If you get on Amazon, at least if you get a problem with it or you don't like it, you can return it. And there's not many companies you can do that with. Uh, I wouldn't like to try it with Gearbest, that's for sure. But anyway, this has been the B-Link, the BT3 Pro. Um, I've been Mike. This has been Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. That's also been Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To on there. And we will see you again in the very next video. Thanks very much for watching.